St. Tammany Parish is not the most likely place for a rebellion against the oil and gas industry in Louisiana to erupt. Situated across Lake Pontchartrain from New Orleans, over the past 50 years, St. Tammany has transformed from a rural parish with a small population to a bedroom community for the Crescent City and now into a fast-growing community that charts its own course. It's a parish of rebels and independent thinkers, as well as a bastion of conservative politics in Louisiana. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the parish's clean air and abundant artesian springs earned it a reputation as a place where people could go to restore their health, regardless of the malady. Everything from tuberculosis to yellow fever and mental fatigue could be eased, if not cured, by spending time in St. Tammany. St. Tammany was part of the West Florida Republic, which was formed in 1810 after people in what are now Louisiana's Florida parishes rebelled against Spanish rule. The Republic only lasted 74 days, but the spirit of that rebellion has revealed itself from time to time since then. The latest eruption came in April of 2014, when Hellas Oil announced that it intended to bring fracking into St. Tammany Parish. It was an attempt to cash in on some of the estimated 7 billion barrels of oil trapped in the Tuscaloosa Marine Shale. The proposed drilling site is located off a two-lane state highway about a mile from Lakeshore High School. Upscale residential developments sit about two miles from the proposed drilling site. The location itself is situated in wetlands. But the central problem is that the Southern Hills Aquifer System, the sole source of drinking water for everyone in 10 southeast Louisiana parishes and most of southern Mississippi, sits between the Tuscaloosa Marine Shale and the land we walk on. Every well drilled in the eastern end of the Tuscaloosa Marine Shale must pierce that sole source of drinking water for the one million people in southeast Louisiana who rely on it. St. Tammany erupted. At a fracking informational meeting in the Abita Springs Town Hall moderated by the St. Tammany League of Women Voters on May 1st, more than 600 people turned out. Down the road that same evening, 300 people turned out for a St. Tammany Parish Council meeting where a decision to hire attorneys to challenge the proposed drilling was discussed. Louisiana oil and gas industry flax, accustomed to operating within their bubble of fawning supporters, were taken aback by the hostile reception their presentation received in Abita Springs. The citizens of St. Tammany were not buying what the oil and gas industry was selling. Scott Eustis with the Gulf Restoration Network described the stake. There are economic reasons for drilling, but it's about what we're going to lose um, here in St. Tammany Parish. What we have here in Louisiana is the last place that we haven't drilled into nothing. Um, if you, I, I have a slide. St. Tammany residents expected state and local government to represent them. They certainly intended to make their feelings heard. They did what most Louisiana citizens had never done when challenging the oil and gas industry. They showed up. They fought back. They defended their community. And that's where the truth about Louisiana's petrocolonial status began to become clear. 
On June 17th in Baton Rouge, a few dozen St. Tammany residents showed up at a joint U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and Louisiana Department of Natural Resources hearing on the wetlands permit Hellas will need to drill. The spokesperson for Louisiana DNR told reporters afterwards that it was, quote, very unusual for any public participation in such a hearing. St. Tammany Parish residents had just intruded on the cozy relationship that exists between the oil and gas industry and the Department of Natural Resources, the state government entity that is supposed to regulate the industry. It's more than just cozy, it's corrupt. For years in Louisiana, the oil and gas industry has had veto power over the appointment of secretaries of the Department of Natural Resources in a tacit agreement with governors regardless of their political party. Representatives of DNR and the Office of Conservation, which is part of the department, are fixtures at the annual meetings of the Louisiana Oil and Gas Association, the industry lobbying group that is dominated by oil and gas drilling and service companies. That familiarity has bred consent, as the Department of Natural Resources has become a clear example of regulatory capture. The department cannot identify a single drilling permit that it has ever rejected for any reason. DNR and the Office of Conservation are captives of the oil and gas industry in Louisiana. The town of Abita Springs and the local government watchdog groups concerned citizens of St. Tammany jointly requested that DNR and the Office of Conservation hold a public hearing in St. Tammany Parish on the Hellas drilling permit. This public meddling into the DNR oil and gas industry circle of friends did not sit well with Hellas and it showed at the November 12th hearing on the drilling permit. The hearing was held at Lakeshore High School in Mandeville, just over a mile from the proposed Hellas drilling site. About 700 people showed up for that meeting. Hellas and their attorney decided to make the public pay for causing them a delay. The meeting began at 5 p.m. Hellas and their consultants took most of the first three hours making their case for the permit to the DNR staff that ran the meeting. When attorneys for Tulane's environmental law clinic asked that Hellas be allowed to submit the reports and presentations of their witnesses in writing, the Hellas attorney cited a state rule that Hellas was entitled and required to address all aspects of the permit request. It was a public hearing version of going into the four corner stall and basketball. By the time the attorneys for Tulane called their one witness, it was almost 9 p.m. before citizens of St. Tammany got a chance to speak. About 150 people had signed up to deliver up to five minutes of public comment. About half of the crowd had left by the time the public comment section opened. It was a Wednesday night. People had worked the next day. But the people of St. Tammany were determined to have their say. Business people, former oil and gas defense attorneys, Farmers, retirees, mechanics, mothers, students, artists, mathematicians held their ground and let DNR know that fracking is not right for St. Tammany Parish. Myself, my firm, Adam Reese, of course, a very fine firm, Municipal and Lewis, and it made a very good living working for the oil companies. We made that living defending the oil companies when they had access. And despite the best efforts of all these companies, despite their good intentions and their good safety programs and environmental programs, I had hundreds of cases that I defended them each and every year. To listen to these experts, paid experts, talk about that this is a very safe thing, defies what you and I know. We have a chance to show the world, right now, all of us, that we have all done our work, and that to say that we can have a first or something, why don't we show you that we can have a first or second in citizen's rights? There's a lot of respect for me to submit that oil is not really as good as what we used to have. I do not feel that the benefits of this entire project even come close to the risk that puts every member of this school, my school, up.
when it comes to this psychedelic fraction that has some problems with the past.
Air and water pollution strike at the heart of the parish's identity. The period for written comment closed on November 19th. The Office of Conservation has promised a decision on the Hellas permit within 30 days of the end of that period. Should DNR issue the permit, Hellas will not be able to start drilling right away. They still have not obtained the wetlands permit, and then there are the mounting legal challenges to the operation. The only person, the only people, the only thing will save us is us. And this country was formed by citizens just like you, standing around and saying, you know, this isn't right. The king over in England, he telling us what to do, what we can be, how we can act, who we got to marry, what we can do. That's basically what this damn Texas company is doing. They're telling you, get out of the way. Trust us. You think that the state has equipment to go out there and do 24-7 monitoring what's going on? No! no. They will tell you it's self-reported, self-regulated. Who gave up their laws? Our legislature. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got to change that in Louisiana. And it starts right here in St. Tammany Parish. Let the revolution start here. Thanks to the St. Tammany fracking rebellion, the oil and gas industry and its partners in government and politics have a burgeoning credibility crisis on its hands in Louisiana. Could this rebellion spread and ultimately help end Louisiana's petrocolonial status? Time will tell. But the rebellion is on in St. Tammany. How far can it go? We will find out in 2015.